starting on November 16, 2015, a YouTube ID critic user known as Little Did Man uploaded a video in response to the combinatorial inflation problem, which is a challenge proposed by neo-Darwinian opponents who dispute the claim that a functional protein can arise under the mechanisms of standard evolutionary theory. The combinatorial inflation problem in terms of protein evolution argues that a functional protein arising through natural selection and random mutations is ridiculously unlikely or virtually impossible to occur, given the extreme ridiculous odds against chance. In the famous case of Douglas X, as more residues are added in the given protein, the more unlikely and bigger the combination of all different types of amino acid sequences becomes. In a protein with a length of 150 amino acids, the probability of finding a functional protein is 1 out of 10 to the power of 77 different amino acid sequences that will not fold properly and fail to perform a specific function necessary for the cell. Advocates of this combinatorial problem see this as irrefutable or at least very strong evidence against protein evolution predicted by standard neo-Darwinian theory. Critics like Little Deadman in defense of protein evolution, however, dispute this as what will be shown in the video that you are about to see. Hello, I'm going to talk about uh, Darwin's doubt again. I'm going to continue this on. And this time I'm going to look at his, probably his weightiest chapter, or at least the one that's off, the most often brought up to me as um, irrefutable, which is chapter nine, combinatorial inflation. Okay. And this is the beautiful thing. Um, now you look at this and now this is his, his calculations. Um, and then he cites a number of others are all uh, hypotheticals, meaning, I mean, they're ones that, you know, people plug numbers into a computer, plug numbers into their calculator, and they come up with these numbers and go, well, evolution's impossible. Look at that. Look at those big, giant numbers we have. Um, but it's not, it's not necessarily experimentally derived. Um, but then when you start looking at the literature on this, um, I don't, I don't have a paper copy of it. Uh, I have an electronic copy of it, but I will put a link down below. It's free online. A uh, paper by Keith and I hope I don't mess this up. Zostack, Zostack. Um, sorry, I apologize if anybody knows him and I butchered his name. Um, I have a hard time with that. Those S Z combinations, I think. Anyway, uh, so they did. This is two thousand and one. They published a paper where they took an eighty residue protein. And then they randomized. They randomized all possible combinations of this 80 residue protein, right? Um, just to see. And then they they were looking for they were they were directing towards a particular result. Now, okay, in other words, selection, um, artificial selection in this case. They were looking for ATP binding affinity. Okay, so this is a randomized. This is just every possible amino acid jumbled up randomly, and they in a sample of 10 to the 12 um, possible combinations, they found four with ATP binding affinity, four. Um, so that works out to be about, I think, 1.2 times 10 to the 11th, um, one, one out of 1.2 1. times 10 to the 11th power are the odds of creating a ATP binding based on based on the four that they have. Now they might get more next time they next time the experiments run or let fewer, but the point is um, they they got four when by these theoretical numbers they shouldn't have gotten one even if they ran the experiment trillions of times for the lifespan of the universe, they shouldn't have gotten a single one. Um they got four. Um, so anyway, so he that that right there, and I figured it out. I worked it out to be, I think it's five times ten to the ninetieth, more likely than Myers numbers allow for. That's huge. Okay, um, so basically, the real world says his numbers are bullshit. As you can see here, Little Dead Man rejected the combinatorial inflation problem by citing a 2001 paper by Keith and Solstack entitled functional proteins from a random sequence library. Here, Letho uses this paper as a counter-argument for the combinatorial inflation problem by implying that four randomly generated synthetic proteins have been discovered to have ATP binding affinities from a sample of 10 to the power of 12 possible purified non-redundant combinations. In addition, he uses this argument against the combinatorial inflation enigma by relying on the fact that four randomized man-made proteins have been experimentally generated under successive rounds 
of in vitro selection with a much more likelihood of 1 times 10 to the 11th power of creating a functional ATP binding protein as opposed to extreme combinatorial inflation estimated probability as put forth by Douglas Axe and in Stephen Meyer's book, Darwin Stell. So, does Lethal Man actually have a point? Has he finally refuted the combinatorial inflation problem that intelligent design advocates and protein evolution critics so strongly argue about? Not really. Upon doing a critical analysis, I discovered a significant flaw in Lethal's reasoning. He failed to address one crucial point about Keefe's and Sostak's paper. That is, the paper does not actually reflect to that of proteins being practiced in nature. The reason behind this is the fact that Keefe and Sostak used a DNA library protein sample that was designed specifically to eliminate stop codons and phase shift mutations. Therefore, the 1 times 10 to the 11th power of probability of finding a functional protein is actually very limited and based on an unreliable sample population where neither frame shift mutations nor stop codons occur. Given this limitation as implied by Keefe and Solstack, Lethal has rather misinterpreted their overall conclusion of what they meant by creating a functional protein that is specific to ATP binding. Regardless, Lethal's probability argument based on Keefe Solstack's 2001 paper does not work given that it deliberately ignores friendship mutations and stop codons unlike the DNA mutations that occur in nature. Therefore, it is safe and reasonable to consider the so-called 1 times 10 to the 11th power probability as unreliable and fallacious when tested in the real world given that nature does not simply ignore friendship mutations nor stop codons, rendering the probability even more unlikely than what the paper actually implies. Now digging even deeper to the problem, man-made ATP binding proteins are actually found to be lethal in vivo rather than act as a benefit for the cell. Synthetic ATP binding proteins have been reported in the literature to disturb or disrupt the normal energetic balance of the cell. One paper that demonstrates this is a 2009 paper entitled A Man-Made ATP Binding Protein Evolved Independent of Nature Causes Abnormal Growth in Bacterial Cells. Here, researchers synthesized a high-affinity ATP binding protein that was generated from an unconstrained pool of random amino acid sequences and tested its effects using bacterial samples of E. coli. To their surprise, they discovered that the synthetic protein named DX has caused drastic effects to the normal energetic balance of the cell, affecting cell division, metabolism, as well as growth in E. coli, despite its high affinity in ATP binding. It was later discovered in the same paper that the man-made DX ATP binding protein acted as a bacterial static against the E. coli. This protein, rather than being beneficially useful in evolutionary terms, has rather become counterproductive and harmful in vivo. Although the protein was capable of achieving ATP binding affinity, it was actually pretty useless and harmful. Unlike standard neo-Darwinian theory, where functional proteins must not only perform a specific effect, but also be beneficial as well. As we have seen in the study, although the protein was functional, it was not beneficial for the cell, which leads to an interesting question. Just how many functional proteins are actually harmful as opposed to them being useful? It may seem that, aside from the combinatorial inflation problem, one must also consider just how many functional proteins are beneficial as opposed to those being harmful. In summary, Little Deban did not refute the combinatorial inflation problem given that 1. He misrepresented Keefe's and Sosak paper of what they meant by finding a functional protein given that they have eliminated friendship and codons by experimental design, and 2. Just because a protein is functional doesn't necessarily mean it is beneficial for the cell. Thanks for watching.